Hi, today we will discuss what is course pattern in microservice architectures. Course are also known as CQRS pattern in microservice architecture. Let's look at what that is and how we can use that in different kind of applications and different kind of system designs. We are also going to talk about uh, what are the scenarios where you should implement uh, course pattern and what are the requirements that your system should have to implement this. This is a complex pattern. I've discussed about uh, other design patterns also in a separate video, but this is going to be more focused on the course pattern and we are going to talk in more details. So let's jump straight in. CQRS course pattern is command query responsibility segregation. That's CQRS. Basically, it separates the read and the write. So the architecture, if you see, you will be able to understand. So if you see the, the there are two microservices, but the path to write the data and the path to read the data from are separate, right? So the top microservice that you see, that's called command where you are actually writing the data. That data is getting synced and replicated in some kind of a format. You can also have some kind of functions in between uh, in a read database. And that is where the uh, clients are when they are doing a query that is the uh, read, they read it from a different database. So that's the CQRS pattern uh, that basically segregates the separates the write from the read. That is the command from the query. Uh, so yeah, th that is in itself a benefit. So it is obviously a separation of concern, operation concerns, because your write is separate than your read. If at all, at any point of time, your write database is not working, your reads doesn't get impacted, right? Although that's not obviously you want to have everything working at every point of time, which is where the high availability is needed but this definitely gives a separation of concern which is useful uh, this is also required in event sourced architectures now the drawbacks are uh, like you can see the write actually uh, syncs the data or replicates the data to the read which basically means that there can be an increased lag right that the latency can increase uh, which can bring into eventual consistency state uh, they are can be potential duplication implementations. The coding can be duplicated because uh, it's basically to some extent uh, similar kind of data and that is being written at one place and read from another place. So uh, the, the, the way the microservices will be implemented will potentially have similar kind of uh, code and the complexity might increase. Yes, so it might increase complexity. Uh, you can use this pattern if you read an right workloads have separate requirements for scaling latency consistency right so if that is one of the requirement this is the pattern that you should use and in most of the cases that is uh, uh, likely one of the tenets so this is one of the pattern that can be used uh, this pattern like i mentioned it it results in eventual consistency between the data stores like when you write and then you read now if you want to write the data and then immediately want to get the or read that data it might not be available in the first request it might take two or three requests to get the data because the write has not yet synced to the read database and you are since you are reading from the read database the data has not is not yet available in the read database so that couple of seconds or few milliseconds there might be a lag in getting the doing the read so whenever you are using this pattern keep that in mind that it, it is an eventual consistent system now when to use this course pattern First, your read and write access should vary greatly, right? Uh, because there are two separate uh, data stores. So your read and write should not be dependent, much dependent on each other and the access pattern is uh, greatly varies, right? Uh, when your availability is more important than consistency, uh, because obviously you are uh, providing a different write and a different read. So which means that you are uh, you are more focused towards providing more availability to your system rather than consistency. Even if the data is stale, that's fine for you, for your application, but the system should be available. Third, when the UI can work asynchronously, obviously, since your read is off the right database and both of them are separate uh, data stores, uh, the UI need to wait till the data is synced from the right database to the read database, right? So uh, it cannot be, since like we mentioned, it was an eventual consistent system, which basically means that the data should be available uh, asynchronously, uh, basically after there might be some latency involved. 
and which is where your UI might not work uh, immediately. Right? So uh, if that is a use case, then uh, course suits very well. Uh, fourth, the business logic is complex for simple crowd operations, right? Our simple create, read, update, delete kind of operations, your business logic might be more complex. And when you are building an application which is distributed for millions of users or even in interviews, it is uh, quite recommended that you provide a course angle to your design because uh, that basically means that you are also talking about scaling. That is what our uh, fifth point is because our reads and writes are separate, you can also uh, independently scale them, right? One is not dependent on the other. So that is the course pattern in microservice architectures. Hopefully this was useful.